What we are saying is have a heart. We've got to be able to regenerate our people. People who are kind, people who are cruel, but that's life. You can be bigger about people. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. If you all have a chance to bring about change, I'm going to ask each one of you what changes would you like to see to bring about an improvement in the situation. Professor, you start first. First of all, I think there should be engagement with the other in popular culture. We need to see that on film, in song, in terms of uh, public-private partnerships or, you know, helping in common causes and so on for charity and so on. We can start with the kids in primary school and upwards and so on. And secondly, I think the government also needs to look at uh, slowing down the, the influx of uh, foreign labour into Singapore. We can slow down our economic growth by one percentage point. I'm sure that would not hurt. Kelvin? Okay, Ellen has been saying that. And in fact, I would say that, recently is that I would say that basically I think uh, generally in my trade or industry is that we, we, we don't have a lot of foreign workers, but we have a lot of workers who are staying, is my client my customer. I think to me it's a, it's a respect. It's a respect that I believe, that I hope that Singaporean, in from whether you're from a banker to, to a generous work, general trade itself, you should respect foreign workers itself. You respect know, I think and they appreciation? Yeah, they contribute to us, to our country. Our economy grow. I think they, I think they have contributed. We recognize that. I think overall itself, I would say that this is something that we, we should uh, uh, appreciate they have come to contribute to our country. Okay. And Vincent? For me, it's quite uh, straightforward. The International Labour Organization has seven core uh, conventions on uh, uh, labour rights. Uh, 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 so the two things I would wish for is one, that Singapore ratifies these seven core conventions. Some of which are? Oh, uh, things like uh, pay uh, payments on time, protection uh, uh, of the law, equal treatment, you know, that sort of thing. It, I mean, it's a huge uh, 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 range. You can Google them, the seven core international labor organization conventions. Uh, so ratify them first and then redraft the four uh, pieces of labor legislation, the Employment Act, Employment of Foreign Manpower Act, the Trade Union Act and the Industrial Relations Act to, <coughs> to, mi sorry, to mirror the... Uh, 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 standards of the International Labour Organization conventions and then ensure that they are, uh, 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 what's the word, uh, 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 exercised or implemented. But within the context basically. of our commercial priorities? Uh, yes, I mean that's such a big uh, a phrase to use within the context of our commercial priorities. So in that context I would also say the perspective we must take is not how well we're doing in relation to Malaysia or Dubai or Hong Kong or, or wherever but in relation to, and I think you put it slightly to, to uh, Calvin earlier, um, how I would wish to be treated as a worker, how I would wish my accommodation, my salary, my protections of the law. I think that's the perspective we need to get, rather than how we are doing versus Dubai, which we know is you know, one of those countries, for example, which has uh, quite appalling labour conditions. Okay. Debbie. Well... There's no way that you can treat migrant workers better by giving them a higher salary without raising costs for Singapore. Mm -hmm. So I have no opinion at all about how many more foreign workers Singapore brings in. But or I how much they should be paid. Well, I do have issues with that, yeah. How many they should bring in, you know, this is something this is, uh, I, I won't say anything about. But I do feel that the, the payment is far too low and, the, and the, it, the fees that they pay for the job are far too high. The fees that they pay should not be, you know, more than one year. They shouldn't be more than one month. No one generally pays for the job. So I think that Singapore should try to find a way to eliminate the fees that one pays to obtain the job, which means that from the first, this is for the male and female workers, which means that from the first month that you work, this is all profit. And that money that's earned should be a reasonable wage. Now, I know that Singapore has strong objections to establishing a minimum wage, but it should be at least the wage that the person expected to be paid when he or she came. Even so though you, you, you know that we are paying uh, salaries that are attractive already? Well, what I know is that a lot of people are promised salaries that they aren't given once they come. 
No, no. These are the, the cases that you deal with. Yeah. But, uh, that's, and so that's let me a just talk percentage. about those cases. So yeah. if there are people who are satisfied with their jobs, I have no issues with that. If they're okay. perfectly satisfied with it, if they're getting a decent wage, and if they're making problems. These are the ones that have been cheated yeah. you're talking about. So, yeah. so I think that those that I see are the ones <coughs> who are paid, you know, exorbitant sure. amounts to come. Okay. And then are, find out that they're that they're actually earning much less than they thought, maybe half of what they expected okay. that they would be paid. So that there's some way to ensure that before they come, they know exactly what they're going to be paid, whether it's uh, the in-principle approval that they get or okay. the contract that they sign, and that this has some teeth to it. So more so controls over rogue uh, agents and employers. Over, over the agents, over the employers who are accepting kickbacks. Okay. And, uh, and ensuring that this can be, you know, that, oh, and change of employer. So if the employer isn't working out the way most Singaporeans do, if you don't like your, your job, you can change jobs. Okay. So that they have the change of employer so that those companies that aren't doing well by their employers will eventually go out of business. Okay. So the cost would go up, but that's that's the cost that has to be paid. All right. Mohsin? have to educate the worker with their native language. Worker, come here first. The facing problem first language to know their right Singapore Employment Act. Don't the agents do this? They do this for domestic maids. Domestic maids, not not for the not for foreign workers. workers. The agents don't it's do this. Not enough. MOM published some books, booklet, but it's not enough. Good enough for. It's them. not good distribution. Of so it's just preparing them what to expect in Singapore, so that they can mm -hmm. perform better. Yeah, better. Okay. And to know their uh, uh, right. Their rights and, the, and yes. their expectations. Yeah. yeah. And and at least week one week must give off. One, one day, day a week, week off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But some of them want to work overtime. All the time, but they shouldn't be given over. Okay. All right. Jewel. Uh, actually, I want to say uh, Singapore rule and regulation is very good. I like this real rule and regulation. But uh, I have to say that this government must have to uh, uh, take care of its worker and uh, like its construction site. Singapore have the rules, but all not employer and all people, not observed. yeah, all people don't follow these rules. Okay. So I want to say You're the talking master of safety to, yeah, rules now. Uh, yeah, yes, everything. Uh, government must have to take care is uh, this uh, his rules is follow or not. They must have to take care about this. I I think that is will be better. Okay. For my work. Thank you very much, panelists. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And good night.